All right. All right, everybody. Welcome once again to the DJ Greg podcast. It's been a minute. And right now we're going to do a part two of the Boogie Hill Faders interview. I have my man, Kevin Oliver, back again, Nitro D. And we're going to dive right into this album because the last time we spoke, he had gave us hints about recording an album or recording a concept album. And a year later, the formula came out. And now I, first of all, let me say hello to my man, Kevin. What's going on, dude? What's up, Greg? That's awesome. You got the box. You're good to go. Yeah. Thank you for sending this to me, man. This is, this is awesome. And, and I waited to open this in front of you. Let me see the date on here. Yeah. I sent it a while back. Yeah. You said I got it here on uh, September 22nd. Yeah. September 22nd of last year. The album came out, I believe in August. Is that right? So uh, digitally, it came out in August, and then in September, we did the full the full launch. Okay, okay. However, yeah, we we kind of had a, a bit of an advance uh, in August, and then it did the full release in September. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Well, I well I, I must be special, man, and I appreciate the the special treatment. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up, and. For those who are watching this, you can stream this album anywhere. You can stream it on Tidal, Apple Music, Spotify, anywhere there's a streaming service, you can listen to this album. And I tell you right now, man, it just brought me back to like all the, the old cut up disco stuff and, and a few uh, retro beats. Yeah, that was that was kind of our inspiration, honestly, was uh, taking a, a sample based approach, kind of the early days of house music, right? Right, um, right. What the pioneers in the late 80s and 90s did, kind of finding those classic house grooves and uh, flipping them. Um, and then for, for, for the modern listeners of dance music, it's kind of a Daft Punk type of approach or uh, or the Bucketheads, um, yes. um, you know, artists like that, where they're, you take that sample, flip it, make it your own, add your own touch to it. That's that's the approach we wanted to take with it, with the album. Awesome. I was about to mention like Daft Punk and, and uh, you know, a couple of other groups that you have mentioned because it's kind of like in that pocket. But right. yet, you got your own twist to it. You got your own samples, your own grooves. And right. you've been working with other groups. You've been working with the Disco Fries. That's uh, right. Nav. Yeah. Uh, we definitely going to talk about that one. Plus in a minute is my favorite song on the album. Okay. All right. So I got the Boogie, Boogie Hill Faders Boss, right? This limited edition. Yo, this is this is funky, man. Not bad, hey. How you guys <laughs> do this stuff? Okay, so I'm gonna open this box up. Okay. Oh, you even got a note in here for me. Uh your support means the world to us, and we're truly grateful. So so am I. Uh, enjoy the goodies, the album. Thanks a lot, Kevin and Dustin. What's up with Dustin? How's he doing? He's good. He's he's good. It's my oh, this is beeping away here. I apologize. The That's email's okay. coming in. Um, no, he's good. He's he's been working a ton. He he works oil and gas, so uh, music for me is my full time thing. And 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 we I get him involved when he's got the time because he's been working from home. Uh, like I said, oil and gas. So, but he's been good. He's been good. Uh, we're getting set to, he's coming down actually in the next week or two. We're about an hour away from each other. Okay. So when we could, when we collaborate, we do it kind of back and forth digitally, then he'll come down and then we'll do a bunch of recording together. We'll kind of do like a day session where we're six or eight hours. Um, and, and he'll lay out all the drum parts. Cause we add in a lot of uh, live drums, big D's a drummer. Uh, as you might not, or as you, as you might know, as you might know. Um, so yeah, so he'll be down in the next week or two and we've got some new stuff we're working on. We got a new single a new that's getting ready to drop with big knob. We're doing a kind of a follow-up to in a minute. Yeah. So, um, so he'll right. be down, but he's doing good. Oh, awesome, man. Tell him I said hi. First of all, absolutely. Got the package right here. Okay. So this must be, <laughs> you got the jacket. You got the jacket. <laughs> Yo, loving it, loving it. Okay. Not bad, hey? Yeah. Okay, not bad at all, man. Not <laughs> bad at all. It's got the Boogie Hill Faders uh, logo on the sleeve. Cool. Kind of branded. 
I like it. I like it. Okay, so that's part one right there. And then, holy cow, what did you do? You sent me two jackets? Or? Uh, no, I think I think that's I actually it might be sporting. I might be sporting this here. I think it's a t-shirt. I do believe. Yeah. Okay. Or is it two jackets? Might be two jackets, man. Yeah. It's two jackets. Well, there you go. You got two, two jackets. jackets. One for me, one for you the get, wife. There you go. Cool. Or feel free to give it away. Just make yeah, sure you we'll, tell them where to get the album. <laughs> oh, yeah. I will. Definitely. Lift off, right? Lift off recordings. Yeah, you got it. Okay. And then there's some other stuff in here. Of <laughs> got the lab. Okay. I got the t-shirt. There you go. There's the t-shirt. Okay. Yeah. White t-shirt. Now, here's a, here's a, okay, the digital download cards right here. Yeah, I do believe I threw a bunch in there. So, like I said, feel free to give those out. Uh, hand them around. Oh yeah, we'll do. They're they're all copies, um, so you can download the album digitally from the website. So you can awesome. have it. So yeah, you got any DJ buddies or friends that uh, might want a copy? Yeah, you know, and I'm getting ready to go to the uh, Mobile Beat Experience in Vegas. Yeah, week. nice. Are you That's going? That's going to be fun. No, I'm not going. We went. Is that the same expo? Is that the Mobile Beat Expo? Is it, it is. kind of repack it? Yeah. Because we went a few years ago, actually quite a few years ago. I think we went in about, I think it was 2012, 2014. We went twice. Right. Um, and I, I'd love to go back. Haven't been back since. But yeah, I didn't know because I know last year or was, man, it might have even been two years ago. It kind of yeah. got canceled. Yeah. And then I don't think it happened last year. It didn't. No, right. they didn't do one last year. Yeah. So we've been kind of out of the loop with it, but I'd love to go back. Yeah, maybe next year. Absolutely. would love to go back. Yeah, man. Yeah, you got to get on the stage again because that's where we hit it off. If you could, right. that, that was. Yeah. Damn, I think it was, I think it was 2014 for some reason. I'm thinking or two. Yeah, I think it was Mobile Beat 16, whatever that. Yeah. Number yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, that's that's where I think uh, I had spoken to you for a little bit about that Duran Duran remix. Right. And so now we got. Oh, I mean, you guys hook this up, man. Got headphones. Yeah. And, and and there's a story with all of it too. I'll let you finish going through it. There, there's a method to our madness, I should say, because uh, pe yeah, people were like, you kind of went a little overboard. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's how we do. <laughs> if we go all in, right? Hey, if so you're gonna do are, it, there's only one way yeah. to do it. You got to do it big. Right. And this is definitely big. All right, so we got headphones, we got two jackets, we got a t-shirt, we got a floppy disk. I don't know how you do this. I don't know <laughs> what you so, can play this on. Yeah, so that, that's the CD, but we do have a floppy disk. I, I'm not sure if in your box you got a copy of the floppy disk. It should be in a big box if it is. It, uh, if it's not, I can get you one for sure, because there were some pieces, oh, I think I we shipped that out, that it was, um, some pieces were missing, we didn't have it all together. Air fresheners, and freshen your ride. We got air fresheners. <laughs> you guys are definitely thinking out of the box, man. This is crazy. So I got air fresheners, CDs, I got a comic book. What is this, what is the story behind the comic book? Yeah, so that, that's kind of the origin story of the formula. It being a concept album, we kind of put together a story of what the formula is about. Um, because we were taking a, that approach of digging through old samples, we wanted to put a little bit of um, put a little bit of legend behind the story of how we went back in time and scooped up these samples, took them from a secret underground base, took them forward. Uh, that's the reboot redux kind of ideas, looking to the past. Uh, a redux meaning to kind of bring things forward stuff that needs to be brought forward and then rebooting them right so the comic book tells a little bit of a story of how we jumped in the delorean take a little time machine back scoop up those samples and bring them to the future well this is crazy you got your own lining your own lining packaging cable yo yeah the tissue paper <laughs> i got boxes of that stuff i, I Anybody who gets anything from us, whether it's Christmas or birthdays or anything, will be getting that tissue paper for the next five years, I'm sure. This is crazy, crazy dope right here. I haven't opened up a cassette 
I mean, since Woolworth was in business. I mean, right? this, this is how old this is. But I love the concept. And, I, and, and you know, I, I do have, and I'm dating myself back here, I do have a Pioneer tape deck in my garage. Nice. So this, so this will be featured in my garage parties for 2022. Sweet. I love yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's got a little bit of a soft place in my heart cassette tapes because that's actually how I started remixing and I'm dating myself too going back to would have been like 1992 my dad had a double deck I, I believe it was a Technics uh, double deck okay. cassette player and I used to put um, blank tapes in the record side and then I put um, like one of the first remixes I did was of uh, House of Pain Jump Around and I wouldn't even call it a remix I call it like an extended version because I would take the break and what I would do on the one side is press play record press play on the other side and when it got to the point where I wanted to do the loop mm -hmm. I would I would hold down the pause button on the record then let it go count and pause and then rewind the tape play right. it back play it one back. two three record again and then oh. I would extend it out <laughs> yeah so so I mean I didn't even know what I was doing I never had a mixer I never had mm. I hadn't even started DJing at that time I just knew there was this part in the song that I liked and it wasn't long enough. Right. So how, right. how do I make it longer? So, yeah. so yeah. So I, di I didn't get started with the beat juggling. I mean, I didn't get started on vinyl. I got, I got started on cassettes and CDs, wow. the old, the old Denon double decks. I oh, learned yeah. on vinyl a few years later. Um, so, you know, kind of get well-rounded through, through, yep. the, through the whole process, but yeah. Yeah. Cassettes. That's, that's, that's my jam. That's where I got started for sure. Wow, wow. I mean, are you you're one of the few that actually started on cassettes. I have a I have a friend of mine in Nevada and he did everything, but the most the most spectacular work he's done has been on cassettes. And yeah, a lot of it's just out of, you know, it's like you use what you have, right? I right, mean, I was right. I was 14, 15 years old. The reason why I was doing these tapes is because I used to play basketball in high school and we would, I would provide the music for the guys for the warm up, right? Like I'd bring my, okay. I'd bring my blaster and uh, we'd pop in some tapes. And, um, and like I said, it was just parts of the song we wanted to extend it out. And I was like, no, oh, I think I could, you know, piece that together. And that was even before I was DJing. I mean, I didn't start DJing until I was, it was probably about a year later, kind of put all the pieces together, right? Going, oh, well right oh well i need a mixer i need this and then you, you kind of grow from there but right. a lot of it's just using what you have right You're figuring yeah, exactly. it out yeah you yep. figure it out as you go along and then, yep. and then and then you trans and then you along the way you know you meet dustin and you reconnect and and right through clubs and sporting arena events and, and weddings and all that good stuff and then uh an album so so who was the first one that like said hey you know let's do an album so when we when we put boogie hill together and we were doing kind of this touring dj show idea mm -hmm. uh we we had evolved from working residencies and clubs and then thought actually what happened was i i go to vegas and i see dj am and this was probably uh 2000 nine something like that okay and I, and I get to see dj am and he and i'm he's rocking the open format right and now for years in clubs i had been doing open format style but not that aggressively because i mean mm -hmm. we're you know we're in alberta we're in canada right. um the clubs up here you have to play everything so you're you're playing everything from you know you're trying to mix shania twain with 50 cent and and right. trying to make something happen and no. so you got you got to be very creative and and you're all over the map so i go down i see dj am i come back i tell dustin i'm like man like this style is gonna blow up we need to be more great like you gotta mix and i and it, you know it's been done to death now because it's been 15 years with this style but it's the acdc right. into the you know, Duran Duran's into the, right. all the old retro stuff, right? So yeah. we kind of took that and ran with it and then nobody was doing it up here. So then the next step for us was, well, let's just take this on the road a little bit, see if we could kind of brand it as a bit of a show, a uh, show style DJ. Um, and, and we did, and we were able to book out, started traveling around. And from the get go, because Dustin's a musician and I come at, from at it from like the production side, the remixing more technical side, we mm -hmm. always had the idea of doing our own music because 
our live show just encompassed so much of um, so much creativity. We, we had a lot of ideas. Our scratch pad was full. We need to do this. We need to do this. And we just got to the point where we're like, yeah, like we could put together something of our own, um, but we just never had the time to do it. So we spent years on the road. We get to a point where COVID comes. Mm -hmm. I mean, wipes the slate clean for us. Right. All of our all of our gigs are canceled. Uh, we kind of grind to a halt, and you know, we take a few months to kind of collect ourselves and say, okay, well, what's next steps? And I just got to the point myself personally where I'm like, I got to do something creative. I can't sit. I'm just that type. I need to create. Doesn't matter what it is. I, I just need to create. So I told D that I said, you know, I just come down for a meeting. Let's have a little sit down. And we did. And I'm like, I have this idea. Like, let's do the album. We got the time. Like, let's do it now. Because right. um, there's probably, you know, it's a blessing and a curse, right? Because mm -hmm. there was probably no better time to do it. But it was also the worst time to do it. Right. Um, right. Because, right. you know, men mentally, our heads are we're exhausted. We're, we're not sure where we're going. We got family uh, concerns, job concerns. Yeah. But, but we kind of use that as motivation. Right. So um, so we decided to do it kind of after 10 years of being on the road, 10 years of grinding as Boogie Hill, uh, kind of the DJ side. We decided to flip it, focus more on the production side, more as you know, I use the term loosely because, you know, as artists, uh, we, we wanted to position ourselves more as as a group, as as artists uh, releasing music as opposed to like a DJ show. So that was the evolution for us. Plus, we're getting older. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, let's be honest. Right. Like, I mean, I don't see us hanging around clubs anymore. So it was a natural evolution for us and good timing for us to say, OK, well, let's pivot. Let's really focus on the studio stuff because we've got the time we've put in the work we've got the experience everything's kind of lining up so so that's uh when we started it was right at the beginning of COVID it's about six months in but six months into COVID and we thought oh man this isn't going to go on much longer it was what we thought at the time but right. COVID. <laughs> yeah. and now, and now you know now we're two and a half years in it's unbelievable but yeah so COVID COVID was the turning point for us to to do the album okay okay awesome I mean yeah because you know, you hear this word all the time when we do mention the pandemic and it's called pivot. So that right. at that time you were able to pivot or to transform into something else. Uh, genius in a way, because it keeps you moving and it keeps you going forward. Uh, where, where did you record the bulk of the album at? Was it at home in your studio or was it? Yeah, yeah, different? mostly, mostly here in the studio. Uh, one of the first things we did was uh, we went out and got matching digital drum sets because okay. D's a drummer, 100% drummer. He's a musician. He can play everything. But I mean, his heart uh, and his soul is is drumming. Hmm. So um, we did that because we placed a set at his place, then had a set down here. Um, I would lay out kind of chord ideas, you know, like kind of scratch pad ideas. I'd find a sample or I'd find a loop or something that we wanted to expand on. I'd throw behind, you know, some kind of quick little drum beats and whatnot, and then send it to him. And he would say, oh, we need this here. We need help with the arrangement, help with the fills and what we wanted to do to kind of add complexity to it. Then he'd send his ideas back. I'd add those in. And then once we got to a point, where we had enough tracks uh, that needed finishing, kind of that last twenty percent, get them over the, get them over the finish line. Then he would come down and we would do the studio work on it. So we'd have like lots of little placeholders in the tracks that you know, mm -hmm. kind of like little post-it notes, right? Like D's yeah. got to come down and record this. Oh, we got to fix up on this. Um, so we did the majority here. We worked on it as an album, um, and we were originally going to release it independently, regardless of whatever happened. Mm -hmm. We thought the album would be like a good legacy project for us. Uh, you know, even if nobody had heard it or we did get it out, uh, you know, it, as as we wanted to, we thought it would be something that we could put a stamp on. Uh, if it was going to be the end of our careers, you know, as Boogie Hill, we wanted that to be the stamp, something to leave behind for our kids, something to say, this is what this is what the dads did. This is what your dads did during COVID, right? Like this right. is what we were able to do. Kind of try to use it as a bit of an inspiration point, but also try to use it as a way, uh, like a, a bit of therapy, uh, try to get mm -hmm. all those emotions out. So, right. so we worked, yeah, we worked on the album front to back 
all together, all at the same time with the intention of releasing it as an album. Man, that's cool. That's that's really cool. So so I mean, so this album was just not just something that you just wanted to release musically, but something uh, legacy wise and, and absolutely something for your for your children to remember and you know your life. You know how much you and Dustin put into making tracks together. Right. You know, so. Well, and, and you have to make you know. I I always say you kind of got to plant seeds, water daily. It's a little bit of a mantra I've been using um, kind of through COVID. And, and I really believe that. I really believe that, you know, what you do, what we did 10 years ago led us to this point. Right. And it's all the little steps along the way. And I think we have to remind ourselves, you know, especially during COVID, during the tough times that we've laid foundation. If you, if you're living your life right and you're doing it to the, with heart and soul and you're doing it with uh, love that right. the things you've done will kind of resurface to help propel you to the next level. If that makes any sense. I, and, and, you know, we were so down. I mean, I had a family member, my father-in-law passed away yeah, right at the beginning of COVID. Man. Yeah. And no, but like, I don't use that as a, a sob story. Like I use that, like when I tell the story of the album, I use that as a, mm -hmm. like a piece of a piece of the story to go like, uh, this was the inspiration. This is like, there's no better time to do it than if right. you're presented with something negative, like try to look for the positives, try to flip it the best you can, because otherwise you just, you kind of, you just kind of rot away like in, in a yeah. sense, right? Like if you're not, if you don't keep moving, got to keep moving, right? I like that. So, so this album, this, this formula is your silver lining and, and find yeah. those positives. Yeah. And, and it, I mean, even that in itself by doing the album was tough because it's such a, it's such a, an alone experience, especially, you know, like I'm down here, I'm working, hours on end COVID's going on we can't go anywhere mm -hmm. the kids are home they're running around upstairs you know they're not in school trying right. to figure that out but it was like no just just keep it it's like the what's the what's the fish um and Nemo just keep swimming just keep swimming oh, oh Nemo yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. that is but it's it's true right it's like but no, it's true just keep, yeah just keep yeah. going just it's keep like going. There's, a, there's some That's there's so you know yeah. yeah that's so true so how did you wind up meeting the disco fries and and uh big nav for in a minute yeah so that i mean that's an amazing story so those guys the disco fries nick and danny had also pivoted uh with mm. covid and what had happened was they had set up a, a live stream called finish my track and they do it on the weekly they're on twitch okay. and their their idea was to help give back to the production community, the dance music community okay. was to kind of say, here's a show, submit your tracks. We'll kind of give you a real time feedback and then we'll all kind of collaboratively work on this together. We're all stuck inside. We're all stuck at home. Let's, let's do this. So, so they launched the finish my track show and we have been watching it. We're, I mean, I've been fans of the disco fry since the start. Um, right. funny, funny enough, I had hit them up back in 2013 for a song we had worked on for them to do a remix at the time. <laughs> right? So, yeah. And, um, you know, so circle back, we were watching this show and I'm like, oh, we got the album done. I should, I should send them a few tracks, right? Like to see what they think. So on the right. live stream, I dropped, um, be happy to them and, uh, they played it on the show and, like instantly, it was so cool. It was so very cool because like the, the initial honest reaction was, I was so scared. I, I mean, I don't know why, I, I'm, I'm that kind of guy. I, I wear my heart on my sleeve. So everything mm -hmm. I do, I'm like worried about it being judged or worried about, oh, this is gonna suck. Oh, what am I doing? No, this isn't a good idea. There's a lot of self-doubt that I struggle with. I, I always power through it, but I do <laughs> struggle with it a lot. So I send them the song, they listen to it. I'm kind of shoulders down. I don't know what they're gonna think. And mm -hmm. then immediately when the beat hits, Nick goes, okay. But, and I could just tell mm -hmm. that I'm like, okay, there's something there. There's something there. Like, so they're like, yeah, it's got a good groove. It's got, this is good. It sounds good. And then from there, it led into, um, the, I followed up with them. They said, yeah, you know, this is, this is a great track, you know, kind of get in touch with us. So I did followed up with a few more tracks 
they said, yeah, this is all good stuff. We'd love to release, you know, mm. a, a track or two on the label on liftoff. And of course we're down for that. I mean, and then I'm I, like, well, we, we got a whole album and they're like, what? Like, you've got a whole album. Like, what are you talking about? So I shipped them off the whole album mm. and they, and which is not typical at dance music these days. Cause it's more um, single, you know, it's more record releases, single, 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 right. eventually lead up to an album. But I mean, no. we had been living down in the cave for so long. <laughs> we had the album done. Yeah. I mean, and um, so they said, yeah, there's something here. We'll do the album. If you want to do the album release, like we could release a bunch of singles. And, but by this time I had all like a ton of money and effort put into all the branding, the album. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were already getting the album pressed. Everything was getting done. Mm. And, so, I mean, we weren't about, I had a bunch of money invested in it. So I wasn't about to, to pivot back and go, okay, well, we're just going to do releases. So we decided to gamble with it. They said, it's not typical, but let's do the album. Um, and then the strategy shifted to, well, let's do a few singles leading up to the album. So that's right. why we were in a minute first. Yeah. Uh, then, the, then the spot and then uh, be happy. And then we dropped the album. And then when we had sent them the album, when they went through it, uh, uh, Nick and Danny reached back uh, to us and said, yeah, this in it, this in a minute track is really hot. Mm -hmm. um, like, we'd love to jump in on it with you if you're open to kind of collaborating. We've got some ideas on the track as well. Like, uh, yeah absolutely like right, are you right. kidding it's, me it's cool right yeah yeah right absolutely and then to be able to introduce their fans to kind of our product just made mm -hmm. sense from from a marketing perspective honestly you know kind of coming out of the gate with this um so they we had originally had a sample loop on there we had pitched down and they had a really really low octave coming on hot for a minute and it was very monotone and we kind of used that as a loop okay um and then they had said, well, let's replace that sample and let's bring in an MC. And they said, yeah, we got the perfect guy, a big knob. So they brought in, they brought in knob and um, wow. the rest is history that way. Yeah. Wow. So he kind of took that same kind of groove. Uh, we wanted it to be a little bit of a call and response thing, kind of an mm -hmm. old school kind of old school kind of hip house vibe, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Reminds me of, you know, the, uh, the Doug Lazy. Uh... Right. You know, kind of remind me of, of that that hip hop style that that right. Kifa did back in the day. Yeah, Absolutely. I loved it. As soon as I heard Absolutely. it, I was like, "Oh yeah, this is this this remind me of like you know, in the roller skating rink, you know, it's right? Got that, it's got that roller skating groove to it. I'm like, yeah, this works. That's cool. That's a that's a and that you know, I never thought about it in that context, but our yeah. our intention was always to focus on groove first. We, we kind of, you know, I had a little scratch book of all ideas we wanted to achieve with the album. That's why the album's called The Formula. We came up with a formula okay. of how we wanted to produce the album. And we stuck to that. We said every track has to meet these certain criteria. Okay. And one of the criteria, one of the first criteria was that we looked at it from like a DJ perspective, dropping a needle. We said if anywhere on the album a needle was dropped, within seconds there'd be a groove that was easily identifiable. That was a goal. Uh, so it didn't matter where the album dropped, there was going to be a groove happening. Right. Um, I like and, and yeah, and that and again, you know, we wanted that to be kind of a signature, but we also understand 2021, 2022 kind of music. It's it's all quick it's 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 quickly consumed right so you only got a few seconds to yeah uh, catch a listener's ear so that was the idea was if we focused on groove everyone can relate to a groove not everyone might not you know like certain styles of music but one thing that's cohesive in all forms of music is there's always a groove so it's to find the groove right right so right that yeah. was you gotta that was have kind of our goal yeah yeah I, I i like that concept i like that that, that method of finding a groove. And, you know, I was listening to uh, the spot and I know it's an old disco groove. However, for the life of me, if you, were, if you were to put me, put a gun to my head and say, where is this sample coming from? I, I would not be here. <laughs> <laughs> Google it, I searched and I'm like, man, where did he get this sample from? I can't find Sorry. that. So uh, let's pu I'll pull back the curtain a little bit for you. Kind yeah. of give you the, the Wizard of Oz uh, okay. treatment, right? Please. So, so where 
100% we come from a DJ background. So, I mean, I don't claim to be a musician myself. Mm -hmm. I know I know my way around digital recording equipment. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I can put together stuff. But right. I mean, if you if you tell me to tell you the notes on certain songs or I mean, I'm useless. So yeah. we Same have to here. come at. Yeah. So I have to come at it from from a DJ perspective come at it from a groove perspective a loop perspective okay. uh, and for me it's easier to start there I can always build around an idea rather than start from scratch so okay. one, one thing we wanted to do was if we were using samples I wanted them to be legal and I wanted them to be licensed I wanted to you know I didn't want to take any shortcuts with this I didn't want it to be have to be pulled down because we were bootlegging our way to uh, listeners right? right so so we used a service and it's a fantastic we actually they did a write-up on in a minute from track so the service is called track lib it's a website that okay. has an archive of thousands upon thousands of old records mm. that haven't really you know like they're not mainstream enough they have some artists and some songs on there um that you might recognize uh, like there, there's actually quite a few Wu Tang samples on there. Um, <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, like from from old jazz musicians and whatnot that you can okay. license. So hmm. once I started digging through there, it was like, man, it's like a treasure chest of of samples. Now, now you know, it's not just taking the sample and making it, calling it your own. It, it, you know, you take the sample, we're done. It, 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 that's not what happens with the process. Mm -hmm. But again, it was lots of late nights. Mm -hmm. crate digging that's yeah. you know two kids are in bed it's two three in the morning i'm right. sitting here with my headphones on like this at the screen just click 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 just waiting for a certain loop to come something mm -hmm. to trip oh wait there's something here add that to my favorites right like add right. that add that yep. and then from there kind of curate down what kind of vibe we were looking for we always wanted to focus on a house music type vibe um, okay. kind of disco inspired, but also early 80s inspired as well, kind of new age, uh, uh, new wave uh, inspired. So there's yeah. some elements of that as well. So it's kind of a fusion between that old disco sound, funk, a little bit of jazz and the, the kind of new wave uh, 80s sound, right? right. So a track, li track lib is where you can actually get these samples, you can license them, you pay for okay. the samples, and then they're yours to use. Mm -hmm. um, and part of that is giving up a bit of your royalties for for using okay. the sample. Yeah. But but we're legit with it. Like it's they're it's clear. Like nobody's coming after you. No one's coming after. And I mean, the majority of the samples that we've used on the album were just starting points. They were uh, and we've manipulated them in such a way that we've claimed them as our own. Right. And in that sort of like, I, you know, we're not Daft Punk by any means, mm -hmm. but we kind of mimic that style because most people don't know if they listen to 90% of Daft Punk and you Shazam that and where the original comes from or go mm -hmm. back and do like a who sampled. I mean, they're literally taking like oh, bars yeah. out of songs and just claiming it as their Easily. own. And, right. And they put their own spin on it and it's, mm -hmm. it's 100% a legitimate process, but most people... Sampling's kind of, for whatever reason, sampling in dance music within the last 15 years is kind of a lost art. It's it's lost its way. I think it's because it shifted more to more of an EDM type focus. Um, mm -hmm. It became much more uh, big room, synth heavy, yep. uh, musically driven, orchestrated type sound, which, right. which is cool. It's like that that's part of the evolution as well. But I, I've always just, I mean, I've always been inspired, like I said, like the Jump Around remix in 92. Like, I mean, I grew up listening to CNC Music Factory, and right. like the House of Pains and yes. kind of that upbeat um, cross style, like the hip house, the top 40, the MTV kind of generation. Mm -hmm. So so there's elements of all of that in our music and all of that stuff was so uh, sample based, right? In the kind of those early days of sampling. Yes. I just thought that got lost with um, with dance music lately. You don't see much of that anymore. So no, I, well, I, you know, even even with the, uh, of course, you know, everything I I, I think is mostly like trap based. So right. even on some of the 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 country pop tunes, they sound more 
they sound like country songs with a trap beat on top of it. And it's Absolutely. not even country anymore. It sounds like a trap song to me. Right. You know, it's, it's a trap beat with a country melody on top of it. Right. And I, I think one thing that's happened too, especially within the last, say, five years, yeah. is because because the 808's kind of been rediscovered as a an instrument as opposed to a drum machine. Right. Like, uh, there was a there was a period there, well, quite a long period, where the 808 was primarily focused as a drum machine. It was like, mm -hmm. you know, your music got laid on top of the 808, right. and now people have rediscovered the 808 as an instrument. They're using the 808 as an instrument with the low bass tones and generating yes. um, arrangements around the bass, as opposed yep. to the bass being um supplementary to what's going on with the musical arrangement right so yeah. that, i think that's why that's happened and now it, it's very of course it's very trendy to use an 808 to to build your song right so right I, you know and, and i mean i i don't knock that at all it's just it's that's just part of music evolution it's like certain things are hot at certain times certain things get left behind and rediscovered certain yeah. things you know get invented but it's pretty cool that we're at a time where I mean, there's so much technology available, so many plugins, so many oh instruments, so many different things that you can do to make music. It's it's uh, becoming harder and harder, I think, to be original. That's for sure. That's one oh, yeah. thing I can say. Yeah, it is. It is because everybody's using the same uh, filters. Let's say uh, they they use the same programs, whether you use an Ableton right. or you know, Logic or pro tools right you know, a big thing a big thing with um especially dance music production is what what patch did you use yeah you know what's what serum patch did you use right um and and i think uh, for for our process for my process specifically in my head i think you got to block you got to put blinders on with that stuff when you're making anything creative because if you're it you know if you're making music that's trying to fit in someone else's box. It's like a square peg in a round hole. Mm -hmm. um, just because you've done something with a certain serum plugin, a certain synth sound, doesn't mean that sound will work for you uh, right. or that you'll be able to do with it what they were able to do with it. Mm -hmm. So for us, I mean, it was trying to trying to find something that um, that kind of came from our soul. Like what what's our what are we trying to convey with our music? What in our DJ sets for years? What was the vibe? What was the type of music we played? Uh, what what kind of music we want to put out there? We didn't just want to copycat whatever was happening in 2020 for dance music. Yeah. So, and I think that that's worked out for us because a lot of the feedback we've been given on the album is that it sounds timeless. And I think I mean mm -hmm. that's like the the highest praise people could give us. I mean that's. Absolutely. It blows our mind to hear that because they say, you know, they'll say it doesn't matter if we hear it now or in five years from now, it, exactly. it'll still sound fresh. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and I think that's um, a testament to kind of sample based music, because when you do find the right sample to work with, it does become timeless because you're finding the right elements of whatever sample you're pulling from that made it timeless to begin with right that's right that's right that's that's why i, I like in the minute so much because uh the, the groove number one that's 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 why i like it and and even though i can't roller skate to save my life it just it sometimes music will put you in a place of though it will put you in a different element to where either you were or where you want to go and that's right. going puts me like in a roller skating rink for whatever reason that's it so cool me right yeah. there you know absolutely yeah i'm like yeah let's go you know <laughs> all right <laughs> so I, I i really love that now with uh, i mean of course this this album it may be the beginning of something for you well do you think there'll be like a formula two coming in the future or you're gonna maybe uh spike out into another uh another venture so strictly from the product perspective, all the merch that you've got there, will there be a formula too? Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> Talk on it. And, no, and, and I say that kind of tongue in cheek because um, I mean, that aspect of it, the reason why we had put so much time and money and effort into the merch was because 
we didn't know that we were going to get lucky enough to have the liftoff guys, the disco fries, you know, jump on with us and help us. Right. So we were looking at it from, we, we got to do this all on our own. And our idea was mm -hmm. to have these boxes prepared and to have the boxes done that we would ship them off to places and, and they would open them up and say, who the hell are these guys? Like, what's right. this what, yeah. a jacket? What that, like, what's going on? So, I mean, we wanted the wow factor of the merch around the formula to be, you know, exponentially awesome as best we could. Uh, um, so, so that was the idea with the merch. Now doing that, I mean, every little piece had hiccups and bumps and jackets came in wrong and needed to be redone. Vinyl delays. Uh, I don't believe you have a copy of the vinyl. I will get one to you because the vinyl was delayed. Um, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think I got the vinyl, but it's all cool. Yeah, so like the vinyl. There you go. Yeah. yeah, there it is. So yeah, That's so awesome. I'll yeah, I'll get you a copy. I, I mean, vinyl itself, we were told originally it was gonna be about eight to ten weeks to get vinyl produced, and then it took upwards of almost 30, 32 weeks. Holy so God. yeah, we had dropped. I mean, the, the vinyl was supposed to come out in, in August, and we didn't yeah. get it till we didn't get it till December. So oh, we wow. had to do a short run on vinyl. We had a, a place in Toronto um do a short run of vinyl just so we could get our initial box sets out so right so will formula two absolutely music wise yeah for sure i think our <laughs> our strategy is going to be a little bit different going forward we we're using the formula as a anchor point to kind of mm -hmm. launch from and everything we do going forward now will be a little bit more record based uh like our our new single that will be coming out post formula is called sexy Okay. Uh, with big with big knob big and knob. that'll be out in a few weeks we're um Ooh. knob just yeah we, we just recorded some new vocals we're placing within the track and getting it off to get mastered and then uh, we'll fit that into a release schedule here uh, hopefully within the next kind of four to six weeks so yeah Dang. we'll do we'll do we'll kind of do a single 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 and okay we've got about, yeah okay. and we've got so we did the album, the album's got 10 tracks. And then we had about another, we had another six that were cut, not cut from the album, mm -hmm. but we intentionally wanted the album to be uh, less than 40 minutes long. Yeah. Um, again, part of the formula, you know, right. did a bunch of research on what albums were successful for people, how long they usually were. Most albums are that are successful are less than 40 minutes. So mm -hmm. we wanted, so then we, we thought, well, we'll use these tracks, we'll sit on them. And then once we're ready to kind of move on post album release, we'll focus on these. So, okay. right. so the funnel's full. Yeah. And we've got more that's coming down shortly. Okay. Now what about events? Are you doing any events? Are you going back to the club or just strictly studio? It's just strictly studio right now. The, uh, we're still, I mean, you guys are down in the States. You're opened up quite a bit more than we are yeah. um, in, in Canada. We're still, you know, kind of handcuffed a little bit in terms of what we can do, where we can go. Okay. Uh, and, and slowly that's all being, you know, my kids were able to not wear masks going back to school this week. I mean, that was huge. Okay, okay. Uh, that, that sort of thing. Wow. And Canada now is, I mean, you, you see on the news, you know, obviously all the Freedom Convoy stuff that's yeah. happening, people right it's a little yeah, it's crazy. still a little rough up here a little crazy up here right so um we're slowly getting back to normal but um no we've got no intentions of doing any club work or anything like that uh until things fully open back up because the venues just don't have the capacity um because the they have restrictions on who can you know how many people can be in the in the club so it doesn't make sense for them um uh, uh, financially to host events right so a right. lot of our work you know like is is people based right so if you're having any sort of artist a band perform you're hoping to draw people now if you can only have x amount of people it doesn't make sense for them to spend the money on the act that sort of thing so it's a bit of a catch-22 um i'm also 100 honest I'm, I'm not too concerned if we even do get back to doing live shows because we're so focused on trying to make um the studio work 
speak for us now as opposed to being okay. out doing the shows if we if that's the if that's the pivot that happens that sticks i'm okay with at this point in you know, know. my career yeah that uh, you know so we'll roll the dice to see what happens right we're focusing all on the music side if we get back to doing some shows we'll be blessed enough to do so if we don't and we just focus on the studio work we'll keep grinding away at that too all good man, that, that's, that's that's beautiful man so you know, i mean you know your sound your remixes and i listened to a, a ton of them this morning i didn't know that you can put let me think of oh, the uh, the nxs and uh tone low uh remix i i I don't, man, you guys are deep, man. Like, <laughs> you take all the 80 hits and you combine them and, and somehow you make them work. And and I love that artistic uh, value that you bring to the uh, mixing table when you say, all right, we're going to take this track and, ma and mash it with another track. And just just looking at it, when I clicked on the video, I'm like, how the heck you make Tone Low work with NXS? It's like, I don't see it. And then, right. then you click on it and then you hear it. It's like, oh yeah, I'm like they, they're making it funky in here. Right. And that, <laughs> that maybe that's one point uh, part of um uh, not doing live shows we would maybe miss out on, like Dustin and myself, because so much of what we do that you hear that's produced comes from live shows, comes from D mm -hmm. and I mixing together. Right. I mean, that track, for instance, came from in excess being looped. Right. with the acapella being thrown down on it mm -hmm. by D or myself and then that becomes a scratch pad moment as we call it for us where I pull up my phone and go need to get back to the studio lay that down right right, right. so so typically live shows give that a little bit more free form creative movement be able to happen um but it also too like being in the bootleg scene where these things aren't properly licensed Mm -hmm. um you could do the stuff live obviously uh but if if we're going to get bit more into a position where we want our music to be perceived as our own uh we need to pivot again we're using that word a lot uh, right. but we need to you know to kind of change direction so the re the mashups the bootlegs the remixes will always be um a piece of who we are but i think it's more of a hobby project now at this uh, point because right. there's a lot a lot of things you can get away with in that area that you can't necessarily when you want to position music as your own right and and and, and two other remixes i'm not sure if i mentioned this to you during the last time we spoke but of course the hungry like the wolf remix i i, I love it it's just I, it just comes out of nowhere i don't <laughs> think i don't think duran duran sound is any funkier than i heard him and then and then one remix that I was using at a lot of weddings, uh, the, the the Dre and the Snoop Dogg with the Nina 99, excuse right. me, the Nina 99 balloons. And I, right. was, I was using that at a lot of weddings and it just, it was coming off. Right. <laughs> I, was that, like, I like this. People right. were like, how the heck do you do this? I'm like, no, you got to understand. I didn't do this. That came from two guys from Canada, man. And they're, they're funky. Yeah. <laughs> so I was I, I was putting those uh that that weather circuit onto you guys and and right. same thing with the uh, vfw circuit here in minnesota i was putting them on to you and uh in fact speaking of uh dre and snoop i don't know if you're a football fan or not but absolutely you, yeah you see the halftime Un show unreal unreal loved it so good i loved it absolutely yeah. I'm with that's, you, man. I loved it. Yeah, it, that's, it was that's my generation. That's my jam, right? Right, like that's, right. Yeah, it was every, great to see that. Uh, absolutely, yeah. So cool. And most people, it, you know, I, I picked up on a little, a little piece. Uh, my wife, for instance, seen Dre at the board. His back to the to the board, and she's like, yeah. "What's he doing? Like, what's he? Is he doing anything right now?" And I'm like, "No, he's not doing anything." I'm like, "Every one of these songs, he's done the work on." Right, like, right. I'm like. That's I'm like the the picture of Dre with his back mm -hmm. to the camera on yes. the board. I mean, that's that's iconic for me because that's where the magic happened. Yes. So, and I mean, I thought that was really cool that they put that in for him because I know he feels the same way about that three and a half million dollar board as I do about <laughs> my three hundred dollar 
<laughs> a synthesizer right uh, plugins, right right like, yo this is this is where this song came from it came out of right. my head the sounds everything and most people don't realize not most people a lot of people don't realize that mm -hmm. you know every one of those tracks that was played dre produced that's right like that yeah and most people go oh that's a mary j blige song that's a and to right. me that you know speaks to the power of music production kind of mm -hmm. it's um dre's done a great job of marketing himself as a superstar right but there's so many good producers that do not get that spotlight but have put in that work to yeah. make songs hits and, and i thought that was a really cool testament that at that part, part specifically right yeah. like the whole the whole show was amazing it was awesome yeah, loved i it. loved it I absolutely loved it. I mean, you, you're seeing a master at work and you're seeing the, you know, what, what came from the output of that work. And, right. And, 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 and he looks so happy too. I don't know if you noticed that. My wife said that too. She's like, he looks so happy. I'm like, of course he's happy. Oh, man. Yeah, like, he's gotta be. This, he's this out is... there 50, you know, he's 56. Now yeah. 56, 56 57. Yeah. Big smile on his face. He's and like, man, yeah. we're about to do something like, yo, right. He's fine, you know. He, he felt, I guess, he felt like he's finally getting his due on such a big stage. And and right, you know, and NFL is, 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 is huge here in America. I mean, it's, it's the right. number one sport. So when you got and long overdue, long right. overdue for any hip hop artist, right. yes, to, to be featured, like to, to, to headline. Um, because normally it was just a tag along to his supplementary, it's maybe a special guest spot. A right. little quick, you know, a little quick few bars here, uh, kind right. of thing, but but not featured, right? Like that. I mean, headlining that's super yeah, cool. That, super that's, cool. That, that's crazy, man. That is yeah. absolutely crazy. And and I I loved it. And the and like with your music and his music, it just brought me back to a place that took me back to 2001. Right. The roller skating rink, and you know, we <laughs> grew. And that's, that's what, what it's all about. <laughs> Yo, Kevin, man, I thank you for your time. You're very and, welcome. And I thank you for the incredible gifts. You know, thank you so much. And, and um, you know, more continued success for you and Dustin. I really appreciate it. And like I said, I'll get you, I'll get you a copy of the vinyl. A couple copies. DJs have to have two copies. I got to have two copies. Yeah, I got to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got to go back. Yep. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, my man. You have a good day. We'll be talking soon. Absolutely. All right. Take care, buddy. Okay. Take care, Greg. All right. Bye. Bye.